Just slightly over a week ago, Raspberry Pi Foundation suddenly released a new microcontroller, RP2350. Among the changes, some were expected, while others surprised many, including me. Thanks to the good people of Raspberry Pi Foundation, I already got my hands on one of these new shiny little boards. But I don't want to do the regular unboxing overview video because there is enough of that on the internet already. Instead, I will tell you five areas where the new Raspberry Pi chip exceeds the old one with some concrete project examples. The RP2350 chip has two M33 cores, a significant upgrade from M0 Plus cores of the original RP2040. M33 has single precision floating point unit and supports SIMD, single instruction multiple data extensions. While you won't be having Lama 3 or Flux on RP2350 anytime soon, it is much more capable of running small neural networks and DSP algorithms. So things like fold detection with accelerometer, keyword spotting with microphone will be easier to implement on the new chip. And it should even be possible now to adequately run some computer vision applications there, including image recognition and object detection. Compared to 80s consoles, even the original Raspberry Pi Pika is extremely powerful. People coded all sorts of retro games on RP2040. NES Classics, Game Boy Hits, Tamagotchi, Atari Spong with VGA output, you name it. Doom was all supported. According to one really stubborn guy, it wasn't a cakewalk. Good news for fans of retro gaming then, because the new Pi Pika 2 has double the RAM and double the flash memory available on the board. Same goes for weird but amazing people who made VGA and even composite video output to work for Pi Pika. My standing applause to them. Hey, a quick word from our sponsors. Yep. This video has no sponsors, but you can support this channel on Patreon or simply by giving this video a like and leaving a comment below to please our algorithmic boss. There is a bit of overlap between this one and last bit about retro gaming and retro TV stuff. PIR stands for Programmable Input Output and it's a clever way to create additional hardware interfaces or even new types of interface. Grossly oversimplified, you could say that PIO is really a stripped down processing core that can be used for handling the data coming in or out of the microcontroller. People absolutely loved them in Pi Pika and wanted to get more of PIOs. As the original RP2040 had only two PIO blocks with four state machines each. New RP2350 has three PIO blocks with four state machines, 12 in total. Why do you need that many? To give you an example, a robot that I recently made controlled with RP2040 had eight servers for which the PIOs were used and that left zero PIO for microphone audio recording. I found a way around it, but this is one of the situations where you would need more PIOs. Not super exciting or glamorous, but really important for industrial usage. There is a fair bit of features added, starting with easy to understand hardware, SHA-256 accelerator, to more specialized ones, such as ARM Trust Zone for Cortex-M, optional boot signing enforced by on-chip mask ROM with key fingerprint and OTP, and hardware mitigations for fault injection attacks. Again, probably not for your average hobbyist, but when put into devices that will control robots of doom in future, super important. Last but not least, according to the official press release by Raspberry Pi Foundation, RP2350 has two timers with four alarms and one AON always on timer. Given that there's a bunch of simple but practical clocks and alarm clocks projects made with Pi Pika, more advanced timers will be useful here as well. Oh, hey, what about the Hazard 3 cores? I think these are not really upgrade comparing to original RP2040, but rather a highly experimental feature a way for Raspberry Pi Foundation to thread the risky waters. I'm sure sooner rather than later we will see some unexpected applications based on them, but for now I wouldn't say that RISC-V cores are by themselves are clearly better for one particular area of usage. While you're waiting for your Pi Pika to arrive, 
take a look at the video where I revive an old 3D printed project of mine with RP2040 based board for Wi-Fi control and voice recognition. Meanwhile, I'll be putting Pi Pika 2 I have here for good use and when the video is ready, you will see it right here.